tonight on Life on the Rock. We have Father Glenn Sedano, part two. He'll give a reflection and much more. Tonight on Life on the Rock, we have Father Glenn Sedano, Franciscan Friar of the Renewal, who's the director of the Holy Family Farm, which is a place for human formation and discernment for young men who are discerning marriage or family life or the priesthood. And a lot of times in this world today, we face a lot of distractions and challenges, but Father Sedano, he's going to help guide us, especially young men, to their calling. Yes, and this uh, second part of a two-parter we're doing with Father Glenn. Got a lot to say, a lot of great insights on human formation. So we're now going to a reflection with Father Glenn. I'm sure all of our listeners and, and viewers of EWTN are well aware of the Eucharist revival that is being encouraged by the uh, bishops of the United States. And uh, each one of us can participate. Uh, many of us, of course, cannot be uh, participating uh, in a pilgrimage and walking with the Blessed Sacrament or, or perhaps even going to the uh, Eucharistic Congress ourselves, but each and every day we can uh, do our part to bring that renewal and the revival to the Church. So maybe spending some time each day uh, before the Blessed Sacrament, a um, little bit extra time before the Blessed Sacrament, and also encouraging other ones, to, uh, other people to, um, to participate in uh, Eucharistic adoration. Many, many people uh, in the church uh, are not aware of the great treasure that we have waiting for us um, in our church, in the tabernacle, and uh, in our Eucharistic perpetual adoration chapel. So, so encourage other people to, and, and let them know what it's all about, and have them spend time before the Blessed Sacrament, uh, taking that time each and every day to pray. So let us pray that the, the Eucharist not only will become understood and appreciated, but actually lived out in our lives that we will become Eucharist, that we will give our body, that we will give our blood for the salvation of others. Well, Father Glenn, welcome to Thank Life you, on the Rock. Thank you, brother. We've been talking about the Holy Family Farm, mm -hmm. um, about a discernment, uh, a place for discernment, for men, young men mm -hmm. out in the world to discern maybe religious life, marriage, the priesthood, mm -hmm. uh, and our world's full of distractions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's something that's well needed in our world today. Um, but I wanted to talk to you about, to kind of continue our discussion about maybe the danger of living alone in the world today as mm -hmm. a Christian. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, as, the, as the scripture says, man was not meant to be alone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, obviously, that's referring necessarily to um, if you also married a woman in marriage uh, from Genesis, that quote, of course. But um, uh, yeah, I think there's a, a lot of isolation today. And once again, people are able to deal with the isolation if they have a, a device. And so they keep themselves entertained. And once again, playing video games and watching YouTubes and this and that, uh, YouTube uh, videos, well, what happens is is that you you could you could end up in a sort of a in a corner. Uh, you could go down the drain, you know, yeah. just just by by being by yourself. And we all know that that's not healthy. You know, um, a little entertainment is fine, but um, uh, we never really had a society in which people are spending all their time being entertained or playing games. Yeah. Uh, when I was young, adults really didn't play games. They might have played Pinochle or something. Mm -hmm. uh, they might have, but in terms of, of adults yeah. playing games, so sometimes here, and you hear, this is a problem with marriages, you have a, a, a woman complaining that the husband who's in his 40s is spending time playing video games. Right. Who plays video games when you're 40 years old? Right now, a lot of wow, people. Yeah. So this is so the isolation. Um, uh, and, but once they get out of that, and this one, they, let's say they come to even to visit the farm, they they just absorb just the the the, the, the playfulness and the joy and the conversation and. And I think they almost forget <laughs> that they don't have to be looking at yeah. the phone. And I think too, there's just certain home values that are lost today. Um, and I think a lot of that re reflects maybe the family situ situations so. that people are brought up with, but just spending time together. You know, now you just go into your room, you're on a phone, you're on a computer, and you might not see anybody for hours. 
you know. The, the table also. Now, with the friars, the table is a very strong symbol in the friary, and um, it's almost symbolic of the altar. You know, it's mm. gathering on. So the, so the the, the table is a place where um, where people gather and um, uh, and. But there are some homes that are, they're building homes without dining rooms now. Yeah. You know, it's it's yeah. it's it's the bedroom and the bathroom. Right. Uh, but in terms of places where people gather to eat, people are somewhat eating on the run. Yeah. Um, and um, uh, uh, they say that a family that prays together stays Praise together. Yeah. I say the prayer that the family that eats together also stays together. Yeah, that's true. Right. <laughs> Very much so. What about just the role of friendship? at the Holy Family Farm, maybe even that aspect of brotherhood, maybe having to, just that fraternal charity. Well, yeah. I think our Catholic faith is the thing that really brings, it's the kindred spirit. And I mm -hmm. see this over and over again. We have people that stop, stop by, and they, they, they don't know anyone. Yeah. You just meet them. But it's our Catholic faith. It's the faith and that you're, once you're, you're speaking the same language. You have the same values. Now everyone, everyone is different. But um, um, I, I believe it's, it's our, you have a different personality and different a team that you like or a different whatever it might be, but when it, the faith is so foundational. So when you have the same faith, you're in this, you, 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 you're, once again, you're speaking the same language and you feel comfortable with one another yeah. is because that which is most important to me is most important to you. And I think that's something, um, I think you just said it, but there's been such a shift in values mm -hmm in the world today, you know, and how that gets even projected into religion and everything of just mm -hmm. how we even think and relate mm -hmm. to others. So I think it's interesting just the problems or just the way people think in general mm -hmm. nowadays, maybe compared to 50, 60, 70 years ago, mm -hmm. it's so different. And I think just some of the problems that we see today, it's like, Prayer. Mm -hmm. People don't even think about prayer, right. but they'll go, they'll gravitate to something like yoga. Mm -hmm. But in one sense, we are spiritual beings mm -hmm. and we're called to exercise, you know, spiritual duties mm -hmm. that are ordered to God. Mm -hmm. yeah. But our culture today is just so blocked out God and religion and mm -hmm. all things, mm -hmm. many times that are just holy and decent. Yeah. <laughs> it's to, uh, I think that the experience of the farm is, in some sense, I don't I want to say this in a good way. It's like going back a, a few generations. Yeah. Uh, and not many generations, really. really but yeah. um, just once again, just eating together. Who, who does that? Who doesn't spend all time sitting around the television? We don't have a television, right? So what did people do years ago? What mm -hmm. did people do when they had a family farm? You know, they worked together uh, and they, so they entertained one another and this that. Simple, simple joys. And, um, and it, it seems that People are very, very attracted to it, and they find it refreshing. And actually, it's bringing people back to good health. Yeah, and I think too, especially with young men, just that that battle for purity of just ordering our hearts to God in, in just the most pure way. Because today we are so bombarded in our entertainment, in our fashion, and just what's normal. A lot of people just have this, eh, whatever mm -hmm. attitude, mm -hmm. but it's so self-destructive and a lot of times we're brought up into that mm -hmm. and some people just, it's hard to discern maybe the right from the wrong mm -hmm. in terms of just that navigation, but even having that, that sense of, or reclaiming purity mm -hmm. and that battle to, uh, I think our reclaim and dedicate our lives to God is where I think a lot of times we do need to spend a lot of, of um, maybe formation towards. Mm -hmm. Uh, quite frankly, a number of the men that either uh, are there or that have been there or that are interested in coming, all of them admit they want it. They need some space from from the um, uh, from the internet mm -hmm. and from uh, because it's it's diminishing their peace, diminishing their purity, and mm -hmm. they recognize you know what I have to. I have to get away. I have to distance myself from this. And um, um, while they are allowed to have a phone, and we use we use uh, the uh, the internet, you know, correctly, you know, looking for various things of for the farm and this yeah. and that. But um, it's it's not. Uh, we we keep a guard on it and we keep an eye on it. Hopefully, that the person after spending the six months or spending the year there, they'll be less dependent on it. Yeah. So, you know what? I don't feel I need to be scrolling uh, no. hours on end. I don't need to do this. Yeah. I don't have time for this. Yeah. I have to live life. And I think there's a big lie today that says, I have to have this or that in order to be happy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But in reality, a lot of times when you do disconnect yourself from social media or whatever, mm -hmm. 
a lot of times you realize I'm way more happier you without. Got, you got this. <laughs> well, this is like our Franciscan poverty. Mm -hmm. You know that, that, that less we we have uh, we have more of a space and a capacity for us for for other things. You know, so yeah. um, uh, while while the, once again while the um, uh, the the say our uh, the Holy Family Farm is is not purely a CFR apostolate. It certainly has a stamp on it because of me being there, but also Saint Francis is one of our patrons. Mm -hmm. So so anyway, so the idea of living simply is very much a part of living there. Yeah. Well, we have to go to a break, but whenever we come back, let's get into some more of the discernment issues that young men face. Beautiful. Well, Father Glenn, one of the things I also want to talk about with the discernment um, is for young men discerning marriage, because a lot of the, a lot of the maybe the values or ideas of marriage have really kind of shifted. Mm -hmm. But and maybe in the Catholic sense, what is marriage ordered towards? I think that t today people are thinking of marriage as. Um, a friend. I want a friend, mm -hmm. a lifelong friend, and it's much more than that. The idea of of family has diminished. Yeah. So people today, they want to get if they're getting married. Yeah. If they're getting That's married, the thing, yeah. right? If they're getting married, they're getting married to this individual. Why? Because we like one another, and we enjoy one another's company, and so. But it's it's uh, the it, marriage is ordered towards family mm -hmm. and towards fruitfulness. Right. And, uh, and unfortunately today you see, you see people that they might have pets, uh, they, they have a few dogs, yeah. but they, they, don't want to have, uh, they don't have children because children is going to sort of cramp their style. Yeah. At least if you go uh, skiing in, in, uh, in Denver, you could, um, uh, you could put the dogs in a kennel for the weekend yeah. or for the week, you know? But um, uh, so, I mean, not to say that people that don't have children uh, are, are doing that for, uh, for their selfish purposes. Once again, every person is different. But there's a general trend that um, of, the idea in the past was I was going to get married, raise a family, and you know, build a f future. That does not appear, yeah. at least, to be on the minds of many people yeah. today. And kind of the way I always see it, but it's like, it's like people are just wanting to play house. Yes, uh huh. Yes. And then it just doesn't work, yeah. and then things just kind of go from one dysfunction to another. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I think just too. Just having that sense of sacrifice, especially as men, mm -hmm. uh, that sense of duty mm -hmm. of, you know, what does it mean to be a father mm -hmm. and a husband? That's a great responsibility mm -hmm. that, you know, in one sense is just kind of imposed. Mm -hmm. But I think there's great rewards when you do live that Catholic faith and those values. You do reap what you sow. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a tremendous happiness mm -hmm. and peace that comes with that. Yeah, well, we, were, we were created, we were hardwired to sacrifice ourselves you know and and uh, mothers if you will sacrifice themselves in their particular way but fathers uh, uh, should be sacrificial in their own way and when that is diminished um, uh, this is a, a, a problem and the same thing could happen with the priesthood you could have a a father if you will and in some sense he uh, he's uh, he's he's contracepting because he doesn't want spiritual children, but he sort of likes the idea of being a father. Mm -hmm. You know, hopefully there's not many, but uh, but it is something that for for us to think about. Um, uh, you know, am I here really for myself, for what I'm getting out of it? Even if it's a spiritual self satisfaction. You know, I'm enjoying this. I like this. This is satisfying to myself. Well, to a certain extent, that that has to be true. But in, that cannot be the our core motivation. Yeah. Our core motivation is is to give ourselves, and as God gives, the Father gives the the, the Son, the Son to the Spirit, and the Spirit to the Church, and so everything else should be uh, is, uh, the movement is outward. It's yeah. not inward. It appears once again that uh, there's a movement today of of self satisfaction, self protection. What's in it for me? And I want to be happy. And that's not healthy. Yeah, and I think too, one of the maybe benefits for society, even with just large families, is just the communication skills mm -hmm. and the social skills. Mm -hmm. Because in one sense, when you are born into a large family, you're, <laughs> you're kind of forced to develop you're forced. All that. And um, which I think is a good thing, because mm -hmm. today you see a lot of 
problems. People don't know how to communicate because a lot of times it's just on a text. And they were just from here to another room, right? you know, or just social. A lot of times you'll meet a young person or something. They won't even look you in the eyes. Exactly. And it's just, you here imagine. I am, you don't exist. And there's such a disconnect. <laughs> one, it's, one person said to me just last week, he said, the guys at the farm, he said, they come up to me, firm handshake, look in the eye, introduce themselves. That's what we want. Yeah. That's what we want. And when you've been clearing land, your hands you, you are going to be <laughs> you, know, you got it. <laughs> and I, I just certain things like that, you really kind of pick up on the culture, did it? And I don't think it's just even maybe religious voices noticing it. Mm -hmm. But I think there's even secular voices that are kind of noticing just in one sense, just a breakdown in society yes, of just fundamental, just mm -hmm. maybe common politeness or mm -hmm. courtesy. Mm -hmm. That is, I think, essential to maybe a growth of a just the civilization and culture, just well, the manners. It, yeah, it, it's it's simple. Just it's 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 being human, mm -hmm. and and um, things are kind of devolve into a sort of an animalistic because animals are in their own world, right? And they're simply just involved. They, they they simply just want to take care of their um, their bodily needs. Yeah. And so uh, human beings can actually devolve into sort of an animalistic state. Yeah, and, and that's very true. And. Um, because I think a lot of things are just, it's, it's ordered to, to a selfishness, mm -hmm. not just a narcissism. Mm -hmm. But I think in that Christian life, you know, you're really called to break out of that mm -hmm. and to serve the needs of others mm -hmm. and, and the community. And sometimes we don't realize the fruitfulness or, happy of the, of, or the happiness mm -hmm. of that until we kind of throw ourselves into that mm -hmm. environment. It, it takes it takes practice because if you're not used to let's say being hospitable not used to actually spending time listening to another person or going out of your way or not complaining you know for some people they, they've been raised this way mm -hmm. it's smooth as silk other people it, it's it's a bumpy burlap you know road yeah. and but they that they learn and after a while they 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 learn how to once again how to communicate um, how to serve um, um, uh, and, and how to once again uh, not complain and actually be grateful for even being inconvenienced or having not having things that you want at the time. Yeah, and I think too, uh, you know, the fact that you, you put up the crucifix, you just kind of said it, but mm -hmm. learning how to serve mm -hmm. can be a very challenging thing mm -hmm. because a lot of times, you know, there is that act of, charity not like a generosity but kind of above and beyond mm -hmm. where there's you really feel kind of that death to self mm -hmm. for the greater good and mm -hmm. i think that's something that we've kind of lost is just that common good mm -hmm. in, in our culture and society today yeah, one of one of the phrases that we have at the at the farm uh, maybe coming from me from the pulpit <laughs> is suffer well yeah, yeah. suffer well and we I, all have to suffer Suffer yeah. well. Once again, suffer without complaining, suffer without uh, anxiety, suffer with a smile sometimes. Yeah. Suffer well. And I think, you know, the book of the gospel, but also turning to the lives of the saints. Mm -hmm. and I think that's another thing, too, in our Catholic, I think, upbringing and formation is learning about mm -hmm. the lives of the mm -hmm. saints. Mm -hmm. I think that's so important because I know just kind of in my own experience, other than Mary and Joseph, mm -hmm. I, the, nobody really existed. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but just to read those lives, especially of the young, mm -hmm. and I think that's so important today because, you know, these were real people mm -hmm. that dealt with real problems, mm -hmm. but overcame it through God's grace. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's one of the things that you do see in the lives of the saints. They suffered, but by God's grace, they, they suffered well. Yeah, and it's, uh, and I, in, in one sense, you just see the divine act mm -hmm. or the divine hand and all mm -hmm. that. But uh, Father Gwen, we've mm -hmm. run out of time, mm -hmm. but thank you for being on Life on the Rock. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank, thank you, you so much. Well, Father Mark, uh, it's been a real joy to interview Father Gwen and the insight he's, he's really uh, brought to the table. And I think one of the things that actually struck me uh, while we were talking was just his insight, it was very simple, but just to suffer well. That's mm -hmm. not a popular message today, uh, even maybe in the church to some extent, but just in that one sense, just kind of embracing a lot of just the hardships or difficulties 
um, that come with life. And we can never actually do that without the cross or without God's grace. But I think that's something to reclaim in our life. Um, and sometimes it has, we have to take a step back yeah. and to realize what we're kind of dealing with or what others are dealing yeah. with, yeah. you know, and really to put things into perspective and really into that fuller context of, you know, our relationship with God. Yeah. And I think that part of formation and into fill, filling any vocation to persevere in the Christian life, everyone's going to have sufferings, as he said, but to have that critical virtue of perseverance. Mm -hmm. And I think as Christians, we know this suffering has meaning, it has value. You know, Jesus has filled it with his presence in a mysterious way. We draw closer to the Lord and yeah. our crosses. So as Christians, we have strength of faith to help us, yeah. you know, and, and that perseverance, it just seems, it's like where all the virtues are learned, yeah. <laughs> where all they're practiced. And, you know, we all know it's, it's easier said than done. And uh, you say, we talk about it, and I preach about it with fear and trembling because you see uh, the sufferings that people go yeah. through and just some sometimes are so difficult. And there was something that Father Glenn shared with me that I thought was actually something to reflect on. It's like, if God gave us just the knowledge to know of what all things that were just going on within a mile of us, we'd either be barfing or throwing up or calling 911. We'd, our lives would be kind of hectic. And yeah. there's a lot of truth to that, that yeah. God doesn't reveal everything immediately right. to us. Right. But there is that, in one sense, that reliance of God's providence of, you know, He's the one in control. You yeah. know, He's the one that's overseeing everything. And we really, it is that act of faith to really, you know, just surrender our will and say, I give it up to you, Lord. Yeah, and I think, yeah, focusing on the present moment, taking it one day at a time, being united with others. I think, you know, what he's teaching on the farm also is like a communal life that we yeah. need others. So if we're bonded with others, taking it one day at a time, we find God in that present moment, you know, I think we can go through anything. Yeah. And I think too, we can always look at a person and say, well, what's wrong with this person? But in the broader context, when you look at, you know, the problems they're dealing with, right? you know, there is a very humbling aspect to that. Yeah. Treat everyone you meet as if they're in a great battle. Yeah. Because they Kindness. are. Right. <laughs> well, Mary, Heavenly Father, shine his face upon you. May he give you his peace. May he fill you with his Holy Spirit and give you every good gift and grace. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We'll see you next week on Life on the Rock. How I could love someone so much after I almost ran. So I pray, so I pray as I hold your little body.